We are delighted, uh, Senator, for you to be here. Uh, I got to know uh, Amy Klobuchar when I first went to Congress, and we went up to the Canadian-U.S. border. Remember mm -hmm. that one, Senator I do. Grassley? I do. The next morning, I went out running with Senator Grassley. He didn't have any running clothes, and he ran in his suit pants. And yeah. He <laughs> gave me a sense of there's, there's some informality in Iowa and in, uh, yeah, in Minnesota. Yeah, exactly. That's amusing. Um, but Senator Klobuchar uh, is helping uh, Democrats across the country, and she's in a position to do it. She is an extraordinarily competent uh, U.S. Senator and combines a kind of uh, connection to everyday people and families and their needs and a real capacity uh, to translate that into legislation that makes a difference. Uh, and uh, Amy, it's just wonderful to have you here, oh. and uh, we're all grateful, especially uh, at this time mm -hmm. when women's health uh, and reproductive freedom uh, is at stake. So I am going to stop there and turn it over for you to okay. say hello. All right. Well, thank you, Peter, and I'm so excited um, to be here in Vermont. I, the sun's starting to come out, but I saw the fall leaves. They're beautiful. Um, very similar to Minnesota. And also uh, to be here with the next senator from the state of Vermont. Um, and uh, you have such a heritage. I, um, uh, Patrick, we're doing a dinner for him tonight and um, get to give him an award for all of his incredible work. And thank you, Ann, for your leadership of the uh, Vermont Democratic Party. And also uh, thank you, Joe, for all you've done in the uh, State House and the leadership you're showing there, because Vermont is, again, on the front line, as always. I noted that um, we're excited to, uh, I think Becca uh, looks like she's going to take your place and be mm -hmm. uh, the next congresswoman from Vermont. And we also are excited, by the way, about the voter participation in your state. You mm -hmm. always have people that understand how important it is to be part of this democracy. Minnesota might best you for voter turnout, but that would be really inappropriate for me to say, as I'm sitting with the next senator. And, um, and possibly wrong. <laughs> oh, no. we, uh, but the point is both of our states are always in the top 10 for voter turnout, and it's a really, really important uh, part of our work. Um, I also wanted to thank uh, Dr. Harry Chen. Thank you, uh, Treasurer, for uh, the uh, Liberty Ballot Committee and the uh, former State Health Commissioner and also uh, Sydney Cardozo. Thank you so much for being here um, from the Lerner College of Medicine and Medical Students for Choice. So we are here uh, to uh, talk about reproductive rights and what's been going on around the country. And what we have found, I think, we maybe had sounded alarming alarm bells as well. I know I asked many of the Supreme Court nominees about this from my seat on the Senate Judiciary Committee, along with Patrick, about what they were going to do about Roe v. Wade. And uh, as history has shown, a number of them uh, were not truthful about their views of the case, although I will say Amy Coney Barrett said it wasn't super precedent. Um, and then they acted in a way that I think no one expected, reversing nearly 50 years of precedent. Uh, the Dobbs decision basically has said to my daughter that she has less rights than her mom or than her grandma. And it has created a patchwork of laws across the country, especially in the middle of the country in Minnesota. We see this. We had actually, there was a GoFundMe page set up for a North Dakota abortion clinic that then had to move and move into Minnesota, which is a bit of an island uh, for reproductive rights, given what's happening in the states uh, right around us. Um, and so we see it right there, where we have women um, coming in from other states right around us just to seek their health care. Um, what this is, in its core, um, is about a woman's ability to make her own choices about her health care. As Democrats, we believe that a woman should be able to make her own decisions about her health care and not have Ted Cruz sitting in the waiting room. Uh, we believe that this should be the decision of um, people and not their doctors and not the decision of politicians. And I used to say that I thought the Supreme Court would take us back to the 50s. And honestly, I meant the 1950s, but now I learned it's the 1850s, Peter. Um, and in fact, it goes back before that because Alito has uh, been known to 
cite treatises from the Middle Ages, a uh, time in which they banned pointy shoes. Um, and um, on the contrary, we have someone in uh, Peter uh, who believes that we live in the modern day and that we stand up for people's rights. And that's why we must codify Roe v. Wade into law, and uh, that is not going to happen without electing Peter Welch to the U.S. Senate. And I mean that, it's one of those things, this isn't like, oh, she's exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating because you can see how close the votes are. We have colleagues of mine in the U.S. Senate that are actually uh, putting forth abortion bans. Uh, we have the minority leader in the U.S. Senate, Mitch McConnell, uh, who has said that he wants to enact an abortion ban. So that's what we have on the other side. And then we have people that are willing to codify Roe v. Wade, as he has shown repeatedly in his votes, very, very clearly, and um, also are willing to make exceptions or reform the filibuster, which um, is most likely uh, the only direct route to get there. I also wanted to thank um, uh, the state uh, for what you are doing on the ballot in Vermont, the Vermont Right to Personal Reproductive Autonomy Amendment. Uh, if it passes, it would add language to the Vermont Constitution, uh, which states that an individual's right to personal reproductive autonomy is central to the liberty and dignity to determine one's own life course. And we ask Vermonters to support this amendment uh, because uh, actually every state should be using every tool it has and the more we see momentum in states like this, it actually helps us, no matter if they're blue or they're purple or they're red. So what's been happening nationally? Well, the writing is on the wall for where people are when it comes to reproductive rights. Uh, Kansas, over 500,000 people showed up to protect women's rights. Uh, more than actually um, voted in total in the last midterm election. So over 500,000 people voted on the side of reproductive rights, Harry, that was actually more than the total voters in the last <laughs> midterm. There's an old book uh, called What's the Matter with Kansas? Mm -hmm. And now we know the answer to that, nothing. <laughs> nothing is the matter with Kansas. They got it and they voted. Uh, you look at what happened in upstate New York, a swing district that went for Trump in 2016, closed for Biden in 2020. Um, yet a Democrat who made reproductive rights central to his campaign in a special election won. You look at what happened in Alaska. I just like what that said out there. <laughs> uh, where a Democrat defeated Sarah Palin in the uh, special election. She's the first Democrat to hold the seat in nearly a half century. That would be since 1973. So the American people are on our side on this issue time and time, the polls show it, and we want to have the codification of Roe v. Wade be part of our legacy of progress. And we have not just made, been making history with Democrats in leadership, we've been making progress. And in the Senate, we've been doing it with a very large and crushing 50-50 majority. That was supposed to be a joke. <laughs> okay, so uh, a 50-50 majority, and it is everything from passing the PACT Act uh, for our veterans so that they get help um, when they're stationed next to burn pits. Uh, Peter uh, worked on this in the House, uh, was really strong in this issue. Uh, gun safety, um, uh, when it comes to that bipartisan uh, gun safety bill. The CHIPS Act, so we're finally making chips in America again. Uh, we were at one point making 37% of semiconductor chips in the U.S., now it's down to 12%. Um, the leadership uh, that we have shown uh, on Ukraine, uh, which has been bipartisan, but the president's been taking the lead. Uh, the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, which includes Peter and my provision to start the negotiations under Medicare, which Pharma had put a provision in for 20 years. Um, and he led that bill in the House, and I led that bill in the Senate. Now, it didn't get us everything we wanted in the compromise, but it was a very strong uh, beginning. And then finally, bringing down, gre down greenhouse gases uh, by 40% by the year 2030. So I just thought I'd end with that moment where people sometimes get cynical and they think, do elections right. make a difference? Does it make a difference? Uh, it's going to make a huge difference. And if we want to continue this progress on issues like the freedom, to make your own health care decisions, the freedom to vote, um, then we've got to elect Peter Welch to the U.S. Senate. And I'm looking forward to seeing him 
in that chamber. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So I um, am thrilled to have uh, Senator Klobuchar here. And I have to say that having um, a couple of uh, folks who are strongly representing reproductive rights is so important for Vermont. We are on the cusp of passing a really important, momentous um, uh, bill that, uh, that will be passed by the voters that will make a difference for women, not just here in Vermont, but for all women and people all over the country regarding reproductive rights. We understand that we're a model. To codify this into our um, state constitution really makes a difference because we are one of the states that is very strongly um, pro-choice now and uh, supports abortion rights and reproductive rights. But that could change. We've seen that change in state after state. And there are so many places now where women's rights to uh, reproductive uh, choice is limited and there are more limits coming. So it's absolutely incredibly important that we pass this. The Vermont Democratic Party is laser focused on this. We are supporting strong candidates up and down from up to uh, our soon to be Senator Peter Welch down to uh, you know every, every candidate who is pro-choice. And I have to say having you lead that charge has been incredibly mm -hmm. positive for us. Thanks. We are just so glad to have someone who we know is leading the charge, is speaking out, and has been speaking out for years on this issue. This right. is not a new issue for you by any means. Mm -hmm. Um, supporting reproductive rights and making sure that we have choice and protecting privacy have been high priorities for you mm -hmm. forever and will be um, going forward. And we're just thrilled to have someone like Amy Klobuchar sitting beside you who has been doing the same thing for years in Minnesota too. So um, I just want to say that um, we are focused on um, Article 22, also known as uh, Prop 5, mm -hmm. and um, <coughs> we are just it's very important that we have this round table. We have the right people around the table here. And with that, I'm going to hand it back to you. Yeah, so, well, I actually had a question I was thinking as you talked yes. again about the importance of Prop 5, but to ask Peter, because understanding this state and also, of course, uh, your leadership in Washington. So if Prop 5 passes, which I bet it will, <laughs> um, if Prop 5 passes, but what if the Republicans take over the Senate and the House and what would happen if they passed an abortion ban? And how does that work with Prop 5? We'd lose. Women would lose. The national abortion ban would take effect and uh, overrule what we do here in the state of Vermont. So we know that, and that's why we know uh, getting the Senate that we need uh, and making some modifications if necessary in the filibuster to get uh, the vote so that it can be passed there is really essential. But the other thing, Amy, you know, we've got strong pro-choice uh, people here. They are not satisfied that women in Vermont will be protected because mm -hmm. we may pass a law. They don't think the woman's right uh, to choose should be based on the zip code uh, of where she lives. Uh, so I think there's a real concern here about Vermont, but also about all women. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. And I guess, the Speaker, you worked, I know you worked at Planned Parenthood for nearly eight years, so my other colleague in the Senate, Tina Smith, is the only senator uh, that worked at Planned Parenthood. Yeah. So now I'll tell her that she has a colleague <laughs> in great. leadership. Um, and it, what we've seen with other states um, across the country in restricting reproductive rights, talk about what's happening uh, with this Prop 5 and the initiative and, you know, what's going on with the legislature and just, I don't, I guess, I'm unlike everyone else here, I don't know what the history is here on votes on the, in the sure. legislature on choice, so yes. I'd well, love to know that. It's so great to have you here. Thank you for, for joining us, and we're just so proud of your leadership in the Senate, and we're going to make sure that Peter's joining you in, uh, in November. Um, so, uh, I think it really starts off with a, with a story, you know, I have, have, having worked at Planned Parenthood for so long, and in running for the appointment to the House because it, reproductive rights was critical for me. And then we were talking about access to birth control and how we can expand that. I never would have thought that our generation of leaders uh, would be having to protect basic access to health care, to abortion care. And it was in the summer of 2018, um, I was knocking on doors and we had heard that uh, 
the Brett, Brett Kavanaugh was going to be appointed and the confirmation yeah. hearings were happening. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, knocking on doors with a candidate, cheering her on, and I was like, we just got to keep on going. And we were talking about what we were going to need to do to protect access to abortion mm -hmm. care in our state. And while we were having that conversation, we knocked on a door, and this young woman came to the door in tears. And you could see that she was watching the hearing. And she just said, I can't believe this is happening in my lifetime. And what are we going to do here in Vermont? And I said, we are going to protect your rights. And we did. So mm -hmm. we decided that we needed to come up with a short term and a long term plan to do that. So in 2019, we passed a bill to codify Roe into our state statutes that mm -hmm. had very strong, overwhelming support mm -hmm. in both the House and the Senate. And then the long term plan was to pass. Prop 5, a reproductive liberty constitutional amendment. To put it in the Constitution. To put it in the Constitution for the long term. Which some states have something. Yes, this is explicit though, and so we so were the first. The, of course um, you are. And I know that we're <laughs> <laughs> I'm very proud of that. There are other states that we're are all in. <laughs> but it's really, uh, we just felt we really needed to do everything we could in our power. And passing a constitutional amendment <clears throat> is not an easy feat. It needs to go through start in the Senate, goes through a biennium, and then the following biennium, we have to pass it again. I see. And then after it passes that second biennium, it goes to the voters. And so uh, we are working incredibly hard on the campaign trail to uh, advocate and to remind people it was Democrats who led on this. We need their support to pass it in November. We can't take anything, anything for granted. And uh, we had really great, strong women leading this effort from Becca Ballant. Mm -hmm. um, and then our, our chairs that work, Senator Ginny Lyons and uh, Ann Pugh, Representative Ann Pugh, and Maxine Gratt on the House side leading the effort. And um, you just would have been so proud to, to hear the debate on the floor and just yeah. the passion that our members had to make sure that we got um, this voted with a strong vote and send it to the electorate. Yeah. So we are in a really... This is a really grave situation that we're in, it is. and I'm proud that we're leading <clears throat> it here. I just remind people of that 10-year-old in Ohio that mm -hmm. was raped. Right. That's right. Uh, victim has to go to another state just to get mm -hmm. her health care. No one believed the story. Remember that? Right. And then it ended up to be true. Then the doctor that performed the abortion um, got started to get investigated. That was in Indiana. I mean, this is uh, your point is this is real. It's a crisis. Yeah. It's happening now. Absolutely. We have a third-year medical student who's been taking a lead on a city. Um, you know, we're proud of Vermont that we have good services for women. But uh, in Minnesota, it's the same thing as uh, Senator Klobuchar just mm -hmm. mentioned. But tell us about the impact on Vermont if we not only have to provide help to our own uh, citizens, but we're a safe haven for others who come. Yeah, absolutely. And I'd like to say thank you so much for having me here. I mean, this morning I was in sweatpants taking an exam, so it's kind of crazy to <laughs> what a few hours difference will make, but I'm really honored to be here. Um, are you in the middle of exams, or are we taking you away? I was taking a shelf exam not for a rotation. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, good. Yeah, yeah. So you're not like up to end tomorrow. No. <laughs> We're good. We just won't ask you very tough <laughs> questions. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, I think I think the impact on Vermont, um, I think first of all, Vermont is, is kind of like a beacon of hope for a lot of other states, um, and I think it can continue being that by being, uh, by allowing patients and physicians to practice autonomously, keeping church and state separate, and by ratifying Article 22 into the Vermont Constitution. Um, and I think, you know, the Lawrence College of Medicine and UVM can act as role models for other institutions, how they can serve the public and patients um, with reproductive liberties. Um, I think a good way to kind of juxtapose between what would happen if you do have rights versus if you don't is to kind of think about what happens when you don't. Um, and for that, I think physicians are really concerned for themselves and for what it means for their ability to practice medicine um, with autonomy. And so more important is how is the impact of uh, reproductive restrictions going to impact patients themselves. Um, and it will disproportionately affect people of color and those with gender minorities um, and in low economic status. Um, in, at Larner, there's been a shift in our curriculum to highlight some of these social aspects um, and how they affect health and wellness as well as the normal pathophysiology and things of that sort. Um, and we do this through a social medicine theme of the week, which is really helpful um, in our learning, but it does highlight some of the consequences we can have 
um, when you don't have reproductive um, freedoms. Um, so like I said, I think the most vulnerable will be affected and we'll see that impacted on our state. Um, and as a future physician, I mean, I'm concerned uh, for these communities that already struggle with significant mm -hmm. inequities. Um, and as a group, we're worried that the choice over when and how you become pregnant um, will further cause harm, physical and uh, mental harm to other, to other individuals um, and their wellness, as mm -hmm. well as further divide Americans along these economic and, and social lines. Um, and I'd be remiss to say as a female medical student, I don't worry about it for training um, and where I will end up and my future colleagues. Mm -hmm. Well, there are, I mean, there's bills introduced in state legislatures mm -hmm. to hold doctors and healthcare mm -hmm. professionals liable, actually. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's astonishing. Yeah. Thank you, Sydney. And Dr. Chen, our former health commissioner, um, there's a lot of misconceptions about Article 22. Uh, the opponents are trying to make it into something it's not. Pretty simply, it's about reproductive freedom, but maybe you could address that. Yeah, sure. So thank you uh, both for being here and for supporting um, uh, reproductive freedom nationwide and for supporting us in our effort to pass Prop 5 or Article 22. As the former health commissioner and an emerging physician, I really know firsthand how important access to reproductive health care is for the public health. Um, I saw personally how intensely private and personal these decisions were and how really they they're firmly belong, belong between a patient and their provider. There's no role for government there. Um, and I think the, the, the key thing for people to understand is that we have access to all of that here now, based thankful, um, grateful to the legislature, but we want to make sure of that. We want to guarantee that for generations to come because we all know that legislatures change and attitude change, changes. And so we don't want that to happen in Vermont like we're seeing in other states. In terms of misconceptions, there is uh, uh, there are a lot of kind of what I'll say falsehoods and um, misleading uh, statements that are made about uh, uh, Proposition 5 or Article 22. Uh, one, for example, is this concept of abortion till birth. Uh, that's, a, that's not a medical term. That's a political term, pure and simple. There are no, there are no abortions until birth today. There won't be abortions till birth oh, after they pass Article 22. Another one is this uh, some concept of, uh, of adding a degree of autonomy for fathers now. Um, this is not about fathers. This is about individuals and their own autonomy to take care of their own health care, period. And, and then the final one is there's a, uh, there's some concern about conscience, about how this will affect uh, providers that may not want to perform procedures based on their conscience. There's clearly uh, uh, procedures in place that will allow for that. Um, obviously, uh, understanding that the limits, there are limits to that based on the, um, the health and the welfare of their patients. And then, and then finally, I think um, it's important to understand that things won't, this is not a drastic radical thing here in Vermont. Proposition 5, as many people would like you to think. Um, it was passed by two legislatures, two separate legislatures. It's supported by the, all the major party candidates for governor and lieutenant governor. There's nothing radical here. It's really a, a, a clear statement for the future that v Vermonters trust Vermonters to make these important health care decisions uh, on their own with consultation with their, with their physicians. Uh, and all the same safeguards that are here today for common health Common sense reproductive health care will be there tomorrow after we pass Article 22 in Proposition 1. That was well said. <laughs> um, thank you all uh, very much. Do you want to end with anything? No, you should. Any, <laughs> I, I talked enough, I think, actually. Um, just, I, you have to win. That's all. So. You know, <laughs> you know we're, we're kind of all in this together. And uh, this threat uh, from the Supreme Court, they've indicated with their decision that they don't stop here. Mm -hmm. I mean, the doctrine of originalism, which is a correct but legal theory, uh, is suggesting that anything that is a right that isn't written right into the Constitution, you know, gay marriage or interracial marriage or birth control, right. all of those are yeah. subject to Supreme yeah. Court yeah. review. Mm -hmm. uh, but what is so alarming to me about this, Sid and you and I were talking about it, and when you had Roe, everybody had a right to make their decision. It's a tough decision. Yeah. But no one had a right to impose their decision on another mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. And there was peace, mm -hmm. even if it was a struggle for every person who had to make that.
call. And we need more unity, not more division in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, so I want to thank everybody for participating in that. I never Senate. heard anyone talk about it that way. I think that's a really good thought. Mm -hmm. uh, just because it, there always was choice, and it's hard for people. Um, they have to make their own choice. But here you're imposing it on others at a time where we are actually coming out of this pandemic trying to bring people together because exactly. they all come out of their own separate silos. And so these decisions and these the rhetoric and some of the things that are going on is like destined to try to separate them again. It's yeah. just and create upheaval and it's really it's really hard. Well thank you. And uh, welcome to Vermont. Thank you. <laughs>